Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Muhammad, suicide and a spirit proclaiming to be Gabriel. Let's get straight into this subject now. We read in volume 9, uh, book number 87, hadith number 111, says the following. Let me read it for you. Warik said, this is the same Namus, i.e. Gabriel, the angel who keeps the secrets, whom Allah had sent to Moses. I wish I were young and could live up to this, up to the time when your people would turn you out. Allah's apostle asked, will they turn me out? Warik replied in the affirmative and said, never did a man come with something similar to what you have brought, but was treated with hostility. If I should remain alive till the day when you will be turned out, then I would support you strongly. But after a few days, Warik died, and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while, and the prophet became so sad as we have heard that he intended several times now to throw <laughs> so it's hard not to laugh to throw himself um, from the tops of a high mountains and every time he went up to the top of a mountain in order to throw himself down Gabriel would appear before him and say O Muhammad you are indeed Allah's apostle in truth whereupon his heart would become quiet and he would calm down and would return home and whenever the period of coming of the inspiration used to become too long, he would do as before. But when he used to reach the top of a mountain, Gabriel would appear before him and say to him what he had said before. That information found in the Hadith will sound very familiar to a few people because, in fact, it was uh, part of what the film The Innocence of Muslims highlighted upon and I've got a brief sound clip and I'm just going to play that to you first so you can hear it. Please my cousin you must help us. I'll help you Khadija. I will make a book for him. It will be a mix between some versions of, from the Torah and some versions from the New Testament and mix them into false verses. And the inspiration has disappeared. Wadika is dead and the inspiration has disappeared. Don't understand. What is the relationship between Warika's death and the inspiration? No. I must return to the mountain. Find a solution or kill myself. I have been to the top of the mountain to jump and kill myself twice before. Now, I will. I will kill myself. Now I will kill myself. Killing me? That should now have jolted your memory had you forgotten the film The Innocence of Muslims that's caused a major storm around the world with Muslims in particular, obviously. So the next part which follows on from that, which I want to read to you, is found in The Life of Muhammad. It's a biography of Muhammad. And anyway, I'll, I'll read it to you. Here it goes. It says the following. When I was midway on the mountain, I heard a voice from heaven saying, O Muhammad, thou art the apostle of God, and I am Gabriel. I raised my head toward the heaven to see who was speaking, and lo, Gabriel, in the form of a man with feet astride the horizon, I stood gazing at him, moving neither backward or forward. Then I began to turn my face away from him, but towards whatever region of the sky I looked, I saw him as before. What I'm now going to do is just proceed by dismantling everything Muhammad said. So the first point is, how did Muhammad know that the person, or the spirit should I say, that was proclaiming to be Gabriel was in fact Gabriel? I mean, how did he know this? Because he could not read nor write, so he had no idea what the Old or the New Testament said, because he had never read it. And this is something that Muslims love to talk about. If you ask them, it's one of their champion causes about Muhammad is that the fact that he was illiterate and it's amazing suddenly he was able to become literate but yeah so it's a really important question how on earth did Muhammad even know that this was Gabriel since he couldn't read or write so how did he even know before the beginning who Gabriel in fact was was it just by word of mouth or what so there's that point which is something that comes into great question the actual Gabriel the angel Gabriel that is found in the actual word of God appears a total of only four times in the Bible 
But something that's very important to notice and mention, as it were, is that Gabriel never claims to anyone they are a prophet or an apostle of God. Um, the Gabriel in the in the Old and New Testament just simply gives um, the person that Gabriel is talking to understanding, and it never goes beyond that. So that's that suddenly you know if you if you read that and you do a search in in the bible and type in gabriel you'll see it come up four times but that very quickly brings up alarm bells because here we're starting to see um an incompatibility uh, incompatibility between the gabriel that is described in the quran and the gabriel that is actually found in the old and the new testament so the gabriel that muhammad describes um is not the Gabriel of the Bible and this is very important to note this um, because in fact the Gabriel um, mentioned in the Quran and is mentioned in the Hadiths and as such is in fact Lucifer um, aka the devil, Satan, Beelzebub um, it is in fact Lucifer and if you look and I can give you proof for this and this should have sent alarm bells going off to people who actually believe in the gospel. If you read where it says, when I gave gave the quote earlier on, found in the life of Muhammad, it says, uh, let me get to it, Lo, Gabriel, in the form of a man with feet astride the horizon, I stood gazing at him, n moving neither backward or forward. Then I began to turn my face away from him but towards whatever region of the sky I looked I saw him as before now that is a direct reference to Lucifer the devil because you find out the the answers found in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 I'll start from verse 1 it says and you being dead in deviations and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world according to the ruler of the authority of the air the spirit now working in the sons of disobedience so that the prince and power of the air which is referenced in the King James version um, of the Bible but the authority of the air is actually a reference to Lucifer the devil so you can see a, a link between that and what Muhammad is saying when he says he sees Gabriel in the air in whatever way he he looks but notice how Gabriel is found midway so he's you know he's hovering above the earth as it were so in between so that's a direct reference to Lucifer found there the next point we need to get into is the actual prophets from God were in fact um, directly spoken to by God Almighty himself um, as a, you know directly one-to-one uh, -one spoken of and you, we've got examples of that found in the Bible and if God didn't speak to the prophets found in the Old Testament directly the prophets would either talk about God so there is a distinction between that um, in comparison to Muhammad so let's we've got some evidence for this and we go to say for example Jeremiah 1.4 um, then the word of Jehovah was to me saying I knew you before I formed you in the belly and before you came out of the womb I consecrated you I appointed you a prophet to the nations then I said ah Lord Jehovah behold I do not know how to speak for I am a boy but Jehovah said to me do not say I am a boy for you shall go to all that I shall send you and whatever I command you you shall speak and then we look in Ezekiel 1 3. Coming the word of Jehovah became known to Ezekiel, the son of Boza, the priest, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and there the hand of Jehovah was on him. So there you can see very clearly that God is in fact directly talking to the prophets. Um, on the subject of Muhammad not being able to read and write, something that had come to my mind which I uh, suddenly realized is in the Quran chapter 5 verse 15 it says O followers of the book indeed our messengers come to you making clear to you much of what you concealed of the book and passing over much indeed there has come to you light and a clear book from Allah 
and the reference of the O followers of the book means Jews and Christians. Now I'd already talked about this in a previous video, but I just realised is, is that Muhammad couldn't read or write. So how did he know what was in the book to begin with if he couldn't read or write? So that that raises up some big questions as well there and, and alarm bells. Just you know thought I'd throw that out there. So the last major point that I wanted to talk about was if you notice when Gabriel um, talks to the people he's talking to uh, found in the Old and the New Testament the angel Gabriel actually gives proof to back up what the angel is in fact saying and take for example when he talks to Mary and he says she will have a son who who is the son of God and that actually happened you see we've got the evidence of that if we look in Luke chapter 1 verse 35 and answering the angel said to her the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and for this reason that the Holy One being born of you will be called Son of God. So there you've got proof, like you've got actual proof. But if you compare that to Muhammad, we see uh, Gabriel, this supposed Gabriel, which is in fact Lucifer, uh, just comes out and says you're an apostle of Allah. And that's it. But there's nothing to back it up. There's again, there's no proof to back up the claims that the um, the imposter Gabriel found in the Quran makes. It's just a circular statement. It just doesn't have any evidence behind it. Um, so obviously, there's no proof whatsoever in the case of the Quran, the Gabriel found in the Quran, to be backed up in any way, shape, or form. And another example of this would be: let's take, let's just say you have a race car driver. And if I was to say, for example, that race car, a race car driver was a good race car driver, what proof would I need to say that that race car driver was in fact a good race car driver? And the obvious answer is he would have had to actually won some races to be called a good race car driver. And that's really like the basic logic behind this whole thing with the Gabriel found in the Quran, is that when the Gabriel found in the Quran is mentioned, it doesn't have any backing up. It doesn't give any backing up of what this statement says. It just, like I said, going back to this apostle of Allah, there's nothing, there's nothing behind these statements. So again, that definitely brings up great alarm bells. And obviously, that Gabriel that's mentioned in the Quran is in fact Lucifer. It's not the Gabriel found in the Bible. The reason why I brought up the whole Gabriel aspect in this uh, debate, as it were, and, and refuting the Quran is when I looked on a Muslim website, I, I wanted to see, you know, what the Quran is to Muslims. And I'll, I'll just read to you what it says. Here's a quote. It says, The Quran, according to Islam, is the very word of Allah, revealed through Gabriel to the Prophet Muhammad. The language of the Quran is Arabic, and the dialect belonging to the Quraysh tribe, the tribe entrusted with the city of Mecca. So, after reading that, I you know, Everything, like the validity of the Quran, again, I'd mentioned this in the previous video, but as another point, is entirely based on Gabriel, because this word, which they believe is the word of God, which in fact it's not the word of God, came directly from Lucifer, because the Gabriel mentioned in the Quran is in fact Lucifer. So, you know, I mean, Muslims, you know, you've, you've got to get out of Islam, you've got to repent of the wickedness of Islam, and believe in the gospel conditioned on the atoning blood and imputed righteousness of Christ alone. But Muhammad was a false prophet. And even to call Muhammad a prophet is blasphemy against the living God of the Bible because he just wasn't a prophet. He was just simply a blasphemer and a liar. And uh, I'd mentioned this before, but if Muhammad died without believing in the gospel, then Muhammad is in hell right now. So it's very serious again. But, you know, this just has to go out there and, you know, the people... People need to hear the truth, which, you know, Christ, the Son of God, is the embodiment of truth and is, in fact, the only truth. And you are commanded to believe in the gospel and repent of the wickedness of Islam.